Good afternoon, Bruin fans, and welcome to regional championship episode of Something Brewing with Coach Cook and Rashad. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Rags. Happy happy holidays to you. Hey, same same to you. And Thank uh, you. yeah, let's let's start off with that. How was uh, how was Thanksgiving there in the Cook household yesterday? Oh, it was great. A lot of food. Um, I think I took a nap around six, and the next thing I know, it's almost nine, ten o'clock. So, I uh, had a good time. You know, again, just being able to fellowship with, with family. Um, so, we we are definitely blessed. Um, we also understand that there are some families that are going through some things in this time. You know, of, of you know, thanks and and holiday season. That you know, we also extended our thoughts and prayers too. So, it's it's going well though. How about you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was a good. Good day. Uh, got got uh, went over to my brothers and just uh, football, food, and family. Yeah, man, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, real quick before we go forward, um, you know, I just want to, um, you know, give our condolences to the uh, six victims uh, from the Walmart uh, shooting. So, you know, we talked to our kids about that yesterday. We did a moment of silence before we broke practice, but we also, you know, gave them something to hold on to. You know. Um, in this, this time that we're living in. So without a doubt, just, you know, our heart goes out to every victim and their families. Right. Yes. And, uh, definite, uh, definitely good, uh, good part. And we can, uh, we can start there. I mean, I, uh, I certainly appreciated, uh, last year how we started something with, uh, Thanksgiving day practice. Mm-hmm. You know, so we interviewed some players, interviewed some coaches, and then, yes. uh, and then yesterday, I mean, just uh, doing the Facebook live and starting off with you, and then Coach Jay, Coach Mitchell, and then the players come in, and then the and then the assistants uh, definitely appreciated uh, being being there and taking in uh, practice. Absolutely, you know, it was it was fun to hear the player's perspective of, you know, what Thanksgiving means to them and, you know, this team and, and things of that nature. So I, I was very happy and pleased how they their responses were. Uh, it was also awesome to get our coaches in front of the camera. You know, now we can put a face to a name or a name to a face um, and allow them to also share their ideology or philosophy or mindset of what Thanksgiving meant to them, uh, this this program, this team means to them. So it was just a great day. You know, the energy was there. The atmosphere was there. Um, you know, our kids understand that, you know, if anything, for two and a half hours, you're in a platform, a sanctuary, you're in an area, man, where you can put all the words away and just enjoy playing football, you know, with your friends and family. Yes, and with, um, with being able to practice uh, yes. Yesterday, I mean that that meant that we uh, advanced out of the semifinal round there last Friday, and uh, yes. it was a road game. But it was uh, the way this year's uh, regional six A playoffs have uh, have just um, you know uh, developed here with the bracket. The top half was seven five seven in Franklin County. The bottom half was eight oh four, and it was. Uh, us and Oscar Smith last Friday. Absolutely, man. I, I, Mark, I'm I'm so happy for our kids, uh, our coaching staff, our, our Bruin Nation. You know, they traveled. It felt like it was more Western Branch Bruins in their stadium than, than you know their own fan base. But you know, those kids wanted it. They wanted it. We wanted it in the first round. Time and timing is everything. You know, um, so they work hard, as you mentioned um, in in your your uh, podcast earlier last week that uh, you can see in their eyes, you know, you can see in their eyes. I think, uh, what, what, what show were you on, Mark? I was on the uh, Kirk and Bird there show that they that they grew up in the peninsula now live in Northern Virginia. And they, uh, they've done a podcast here, especially this fall to cover Virginia high school football. Yeah, there you go. But on that show, you mentioned, you know, as you came to do a Real Talk Tuesday for our kids, and you can see in their eyes, if the game was on Wednesday, they were ready to play football. But those guys came in, you know, momentum is everything. Um, playing at Oscar Smith Stadium is not easy. Um, you know, but our kids our kids responded to 
anything and everything you you probably would expect or not expect. And uh, they did a phenomenal job. Yes, and uh, just started off with, uh, I know with us being the road team, we, we uh, you know, um, we did the coin toss. We mm -hmm. lost, but Oscar Smith, instead of deferring, you know, they, they took the ball, but our, you know, our special teams certainly set the tone. Absolutely. Um, what a weird start, though, you know. And uh, I, I, I guess when you say that, you got to say this, too. Nobody's perfect. You know, we got to really put in perspective that these these are kids still playing. It's not that neither side of, of, of either staff aren't doing their due diligence in teaching them the game or, you know, what it looks like. It's just we got to understand these are kids that are playing, you know, a sport that they love and nobody's going to ever be perfect at it. But, um, you know, we ended up getting the ball and, you know, several plays later, we ended up striking with Shamik Blizzard. Um, and then from there, you know, we were we were rolling. Now, midway through, um, our offense kind of got cold a little bit. Defense was doing a phenomenal job. And you can see Oscar Smith starting to gain the momentum again. Uh, but with, with Parker making that big-time play, it really gave us a little bit more wiggle room and breathing room against a very good opponent. Yes, and like to piggyback uh... – there with uh, after the opening uh, score, I mean Oscar Smith did did have a nice drive, but they uh, when their drive uh, stalled in uh, in the red zone, they didn't settle for a field goal. They went for it on fourth down, and then um, you know our defense stood tall, and then you know our offense hit a big play with uh, with uh, Quizzy and. And Billups there to, uh, you know, to continue our drive. And, you know, first two possessions, I mean, we were up 14 to nothing. But then it kind of, uh, you know, went back and forth. And Oscar Smith did score a touchdown there in the second half to pull within a touchdown. But then Parker read there that screen screen pass and then the next and took it to the house and then the next Oscar Smith uh, possession kind of you know near the end last minute but Billups stood tall and then the uh, the nail nail on the game where Billups took it in there yep. and Higgins with an extra point to make it 28 to 7. Absolutely you know kids play well a lot of kids play well uh, on that pick six, um, you know, it was shared with me that Devin Cook kind of overheard the same play call and he communicated that with Parker. And that way he assured Parker, go ahead and make that play. I got you on the back end. It's not that they're being uncoachable, but, you know, it, it's the fact that they're communicating. It's like that small of a detail, just communicating, yes. letting the guy know what's coming, what he may see, and then he could play carefree football. Man. Coach Addison has done a great job all year developing talent you know, it's one to have talent, and he's blessed with those those guys on the back end of our defense. But I've seen him work with the incoming freshmen and all sophomores, juniors, and you know what a week, what a year that he's had as he's the uh, you know defensive pass game coordinator. And then on the front end, Coach Ian, Coach Black, and Coach Jones, those guys have really solidified that box. You know, they've done a phenomenal job. Each week, you can see them getting better, um, and that's what you want to see. You know, you don't want to peak too soon. You want to see progression, but those guys are starting to come into their own now. So, you know, without a doubt, defense wins championships. As an offensive guy back in the day, I disagreed. But now, <laughs> hey, come, I'm all in. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, what a, what a, you know, just a way to end the season or not end the season, but, you know, to, to really kind of put a stamp on the direction we're going, um, you know, and, and moving forward, uh, beating a great, great team in Oscar Smith. I believe it was 18 years ago. Uh, we last, was our last victory against him. And believe it or not, you know, some of these kids weren't even born um, or were just about to be born, you know, 18 years ago for our, some of our seniors. So, you know, at the end of the day, it was just a phenomenal game. Uh, we were proud of all of our kids and our effort and the way we handled the uh, post-game victory too. You know, just lining up, shaking hands, and understanding that the job isn't done. Yes, uh, you know, I think the signal caller uh, was Ryan Pond the last yes. time Western Branch football beat Oscar Smith. And, uh, 
talked about. Uh, he was telling me there when he was there at the regular season uh, game there, uh, senior night. Okay. How it was uh, a pass to Lamont Stanfield, you know, uh, there at the uh, at the end zone going towards the uh, Silverwood uh, neighborhood. You know, that was that was the difference. But, you know, I knew about the Oscar Smith football winning streak over over us uh, because it started at my 10 year reunion in 2004. But I didn't realize how they had a streak of regional championship appearances. as well. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, they Like I said, they're a team that, that is used to these big time games. And, um, you know, for us, we show we're ready to play in those type of games. Um, and, and the other part I love is we're graduating 18, but we got so many sophomores and freshmen that are dressing varsity and, and getting, you know, quality playing time that our kids next year should not be shell-shocked, you know, to playing at a, at a high level. Um, so I'm very pleased the way the structure and our format is going within this program and system. And, again, I think attitude reflects leadership. So our seniors are really putting this team on their back, and they're really saying, hey, follow my lead. We're going to get this done. Yeah, and, you know, also what's uh, what's crazy about this year's run is uh, the playoff opponents are just like last year. But it mm-hmm. was Franklin County, Manchester at home, and then at Oscar Smith. This Correct. year it was Franklin County at home at Oscar Smith. And now, I mean, Manchester, how the other side of the bracket was 804. I mean, Manchester and Thomas Dale, they've been between two and three the whole season. And right. even once the rankings came out. And last week, 38 35, Thomas Dale being the home team, didn't elect to go for a tying field goal and battle it out in overtime. Went for the win, had the play, but the pass was just. Out off the fingertips of the um, Thomas Dale uh, wideout or running back, turnover on down, goes over to Manchester, and Manchester holds on 38 35. So they now host us here on, yes. on Saturday afternoon. Absolutely. Um, you know, we looked at that tape, we looked at it quite a bit. Um, you know, Manchester is a very talented team, you know. Um, the word I keep hearing is resilience. You know, they, they refuse to back down. Um, and and one of my messages to our guys today is, you know, don't go in with high expectations and compete with low standards. You know, go in there uh, with the expectation of winning, but play up to our standard. You know, and that's current our current Bruin football uh, uh, brand right now, how we're competing and how we're going about getting it done. Um, but yeah, they're they're a very good team, quality team. They're used to being play, uh, used to being in playoffs, used to being in regional championships. Uh, they have a good coach, head coach over there, Coach Hall. I believe that's been his only stop as a head coach. You know, talking to Coach Joe Jones this year, so he's been there for quite some time. Um, you know, leading the helm. But uh, we've had a good week of prep. You know, uh, one thing we've done this week was kind of flip. Our, our mindset to our preparation our preparation for Saturday game. So our Sunday was our, um, our Monday was our Sunday. Uh, it was just in person, you know, when we do our coaches meetings on Sunday, we did. But when we did it, uh, when Monday came, you know, we included our kids in our, our uh, install, if that makes sense. Uh, Tuesday was our Monday. Wednesday was our Tuesday. Yesterday was our Wednesday practice. And, um, Today is our ghost game. Today is our Thursday. So now mentally our kids' body and mind are still locked into that, you know, four-day week of prep and then game day on a, a Friday night, which we, which this this week is a Saturday. So, you know, again, it's just the, the little nuances to, you know, not changing too much for, for teenagers. They don't do great with sudden change. So we try to keep the main thing the main thing, keep it as simple as possible but yet still uh, maximize the opportunities. Yes, and uh, just with it being a common opponent from last year's playoffs, I mean, they did come to us, and it was a, and it was a battle. I mean, yes. they took the lead 6-0. Then we, then we took the lead going into halftime 7-6. They took the lead 12-7. And then, like we uh, talked about it um, 
earlier in the week there with uh, you, Coach Thomas, and I, you know, I mean, uh, Quizzy hits Ty Todd in the flat, and he Absolutely. puts the ball over the goal line for the go-ahead touchdown. Yes, yes. Uh, Coach Mitchell says folklore. He goes down in folklore history uh, with that catch, man. But uh, Ty Todd came on campus uh, a little earlier today. Uh, not today, but uh, this week. And uh, we were able to communicate in fellowship. And Mike Bourne also showed up, Neil Eason. Uh, so we had some guys on campus, uh, the former Bruins from the 22 class. Desmond Cook came on campus uh, to see the guys. So, you know, again, just it's it's a lot. It's good to see our Bruins come back. Uh, that was a heck of a catch by Ty Todd, a uh, big-time play that gave us that 14-12 lead. And uh, the rest was history. So, you know, um, we understand that they're a different team this year. We're a different team this year. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really all about going back to being one Bruin and playing as one team and executing the uh, operation in all three phases. Yes, and uh, I know that we have to go on the road. But, you know, being 2 o'clock, uh, 460 West, it's a nice, uh, nice ride, about 80, 90 miles. So, uh, you know, it shouldn't be shouldn't be that that bad here for uh, for everybody traveling, you know, shouldn't shouldn't have to leave that that early. And 95 percent of the time, 460 West is pretty, pretty easy. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. yep. Just take it easy. Right. You don't want to get speeding on uh, get caught speeding on 460. You know, our kids are excited. You know, number one, to get to get out of the area. Uh, yeah. So we're looking at it as a business trip, and then it's, it's equally um, fun when you're riding on a charter bus. So, yeah. you know, we're, we're going to be able to cruise up, whether it's 64 uh, West or we're taking 460 West. We're going to be able to cruise up um, to, to Midlothian, Virginia. Uh, we got already a, an itinerary set. We're going to review at the end of today's Ghost Game practice. And then as we transition up, I want to give a big shout out to Coach Wright. You know, he's kind of taken – uh, a lot of pressure off of me trying to do too many uh, coordinating duties uh, leading up to, to uh, tomorrow's game. So in, in theory, Coach Wright is, is handling all the itinerary of getting up there, how we're going to look, what we're going to look like, and where we're going uh, before kickoff. And, you know, we really appreciate that from him. Uh, but our kids are excited. You know, I've, I've seen so many hashtag business trips. You know, they understand the assignment. You know, they understand – we're going up there to compete at a high level. You know, we're, we're going to let everything shake out the way it does. But at the end of the day, they're coming up laser focused and locked in. Yeah. And I know ever since you've uh, taken over the program, I know that you've preached to your staff, preached to the kids about going one and know um, every week. Well, you know, in the regular season, you have 10 games. Yes. Well, when it comes to playoff time, I mean, that – that one and zero is definitely important because playoff time it's single elimination. And that's it. That's it. You know, I, I think in basketball, if you make it to the regional championship, those teams advance. I believe. I might be wrong, but yeah, uh, in football, baseball. Yeah. yep, yep. But in football, that's it, man. You, it's all all chips on the table. Uh, but we're used to it. Again, last year we were in it. We were in the same regional championship game, just against Oscar Smith. Um, now it's Manchester. Uh, another opponent. So at the end of the day, it's not like our first, you know, year being in it and how do our kids handle it? I think losing to Oscar Smith last year, we walked away and I, 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 I'll say it. I told the guys, I say, we'll be back here. We'll be right back here in no time. And I assured them that and I knew it. I knew the type of team we had and I knew the type of team we had returning uh, back to Western Branch High School. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, we're here, you know, we're excited and we're, we're blessed to be in this opportunity. Yes. And I knew with uh, our schedule in the regular season being similar to last year. And we, and we had the, we had the last week of the regular season on a buy this year. I mean, I think I texted, texted you after our senior night uh, game that, Hey, you know, I know that that game didn't go in our favor, but hey, if the kids realize that part two to the season is going to start Veterans Day weekend, yeah. and we'll 
and we'll be back. I mean, I, I was telling my wife, I was telling my parents, you know, and my brother, I said, we're going to, I don't know what round it's going to be, but we're going to rematch with Oscar Smith. And I know it didn't go in our favor in regular season, but I know that these kids, they'll be ready when the rematch and boy, these, uh, these kids have been uh, laser focused. And I want to say that both playoff games have been here this year, 28, 14. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Surviving events. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I think Oscar Smith walked off that field October 28th, knowing the same thing. Like this is not the same Western branch football program staff, you name it. And then on top of that, and that's not, uh, you know, saying that the any other program, any other team before us um, w- wasn't the team to, to be, if that makes sense, uh, because they're all a part of our history. You know, we embrace everything West Branch football. So uh, I just think, you know, for this season, they, they realized it's a different ball club. And then they also knew that we probably, although our kids had to earn it versus Franklin County versus by bi- week um, and then leading up to Oscar Smith, we still had to earn everything we, we got, you know, so very proud of them. Um, I love the way we're going. I love the way we're trending. As you saw yesterday, we got an all-star coaching staff, you know, it's so cliche to say the best coaching staff in the state, but when you're the last four in the state, I mean, that's, that's a good argument to have if that makes sense. But uh, we got, we got some great men within our program, within our staff that our kids, you know, in my heart and my prayer look forward to seeing every single day, you know, that nobody's perfect. But, you know, we love what we do. So it's not work for us. It's 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 fun, if that makes sense. Um, but, yeah, we're here. You know, I keep saying that. We're here. We're on the eve of the regional championship game. Um, you know, our kids right now are – I walked in the locker room today. I didn't see any kids kind of like thrown off. You know, right now it's currently raining. It's dreary. But, yet I see, I heard a lot of conversations. You know, I saw guys just – where we're going next, what it looked like, let's get there. You know, guys, get ready, let's roll. And I love that energy and spirit. Um, every <clears throat> team is different. Every year is different. You got to have some teams that are that are like locked in and you can't get no reaction out of them. Then you got some teams that, for lack of better terms, I'll call them the fun bunch. You know, they love jacking. Uh, sorry, they love laughing, joking, and playing, you know. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, I, I'm I'm pleased where we are. I love this type of program that we're in. The kids respect the game too, though. That's the other part. Uh, we don't have just a bunch of guys that have that me, me, me mentality. These guys are team, 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 and you can see it. Yeah, and I'd like to point out that, um, you know, over the weekend, um, you know, Elizabeth do it doing some errands and I was doing some research on Manchester and I was doing it mainly for Bruin Nation, you know, to kind of get an insight of uh, who we were playing, even though we did play um, them last year. And I liked what Chiron, um, Chiron Stith uh, commented was, uh, hey, Rags, I see what you posted, but you know what, players, it's time to strap up the helmets and Get ready to play hard-nosed Bruin football for 48 minutes next Saturday. Absolutely. Which is, which is Shout out to Chiron. Absolutely. Shout out to Chiron Stiff. Uh, he's, he's been a faithful follower, as all of our Bruins have. Um, and and he's he's made it public, you know, even when I got the job. Um, you know, so all, all of our alumni, all the old heads, uh, big shout out, you know. Um, but, yeah, we're here. We're here, you know, and, and that's that's one thing that we can't change. You know, time is reality, and reality is time. So eventually around 2 o'clock, that ball will be kicked off, and uh, there's there's a regional championship on the line. But I really like our chances. I love our chances. We just got to go out and, and, and do everything Western Branch football. Don't do anything outside of what we've been doing. Go ahead. You know, and, um, I mean, I appreciate it. Uh, getting on the Kirk and Bird uh, show earlier this week, you know. But, uh, you know, I think some people, I know that uh, 1968 Bruin Place, you know, we just wanted to get in the tournament and show and show people about Bruin football. But I want to say that some people, they were a little concerned of how we're flying under the radar based on our, based on our seating with being a number four seed. And, you know, some people might want to call me a homer, 
But hey, I know what our bo- what our uh, Bruin football program can do. Absolutely. Well, a couple episodes back, I told you, I said we are the number four seed, and we can only control what we can control. But right. we are a, we are a deceptive number four seed. Like we could be a one, two, or three, right. but we were fine where we are. You know, we were fine where we are. I just think seeding only tells you whether you're home or away. You know, the first first round, we wanted to be home. We understand that that ride out to uh, Rocky Mount, uh, Virginia, could be a little taxing on guys. Um, but you know, we we managed to hold on to the four spot, and uh, we're here. So, yes, I'm, uh, we're here. <laughs> We are here. Uh, you know, and I would like to follow up. I mean, I mean, we're going to close out with uh, how people can, uh, you know, follow the game, buy tickets. But I would like to uh, go into our Bruin football uh, flashback yes. uh, segment. And like, like you talked about a former episode of talking about our seating. Well, hey, you kicked off a preseason episode on talking about how, with it being the 25th anniversary of the first Bruin team that uh, finished the regular season undefeated, uh, and then we were also going to celebrate the 20th anniversary Bruin football 0-2 that made it to the state semis. And, you know, here, this team, on the heels of last year's regional championship appearance, you know, Bruin nation is Bruin football is appearing in their fourth regional championship game. And it's just interesting how this season has fallen out with the 25th anniversary of the 97 team and the 20th anniversary of the O2 team. Yes. Uh, in 97 coach Jay called it a golden season. Um, I, I think this is like a special one. You know, this is a special season because it bridges so many uh, connections within the history of our program. Um, you know, with, with last year's regional championship appearance, this year's, and as you mentioned, 97 and, and 02, uh, if I have the right dates, uh, this is the fourth time, right? Four, four, yeah. four years that we've been able to get to this level. Uh, 02, as you mentioned, did advance uh, one, one step further. But, uh, you know, we're it's, it's just an honor. It's an honor. It really puts in perspective the history of our program, um, the success that we've had, not only on the field, but off the field and in the community. So it's, it's, it's a blessing to be a leader of this platform, a leader of this program, and a leader of our community. Yeah, and I think with the Franklin County uh, game, when I started uh, covering, covering the game here with uh, Facebook Live, and I saw Mr. Bright, you know, yes. standing with Marco and other Bruin alums. I mean, during a timeout, I think I asked Mr. Bright, hey, how many how many Bruin alums that's standing around you did you teach how to drive? You right, know, with, right. Him and, Absolutely. with him and Mr. Pond yes. teaching driver's ed back in yes. the day. Yes, <laughs> yes. Awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it's great to see those guys come out. It is. It is. This is what we wanted. This is what we wanted. We wanted we want to and we always wanted to bridge the gap and bring these alumni back that that put in the same hard work like Coach E said yesterday in that school on that practice field and on Friday, Friday nights under the lights, you know, and that's, that's all we ever wanted, you know, to get those guys back supporting our young men. Cause it's, it's at the end of the day, all about the kids. It's all right. about the growing experience. We all had ours. Now it's about them having the best opportunity and the best four year experience we possibly could give them uh, when it helps, you know, when it helps a whole lot, but at the same time, we want to win more off the field, teaching them life skills and lessons than worrying about X's and O's and going one and O on a Friday night. Yes. Yeah. And, and I, you know, uh, with, uh, covering there on the sidelines, I mean, I know, uh, you know, I was, I was excited for the kids. I, I know that you told me to, uh, to get back there when, uh, Parker took it to the house. We already Uh, had a flag. We already had a sideline warning. (laughs) <laughs> right. I mean, we, we, can't give just... our, we can't give that other school nothing else. So I that's know. the only thing. And and one thing, uh, as we continue to roll and grow, you're a part of the sideline. So any any media, any media, it does not matter who. It could be WTKR Channel 3, if I got the right one. It does not matter. If they're on your sideline, they're part of your 
your staff for that night um, and official share with me. But other than that, yeah, we couldn't we couldn't have a 15 yarder. <laughs> right. So, uh, other than that, man, you do a phenomenal job. You know, we understand, as you mentioned, there's so many people that want to be here, can't. And you're creating that platform or you're extending that platform to where they're able to still feel included, still be a part of, you know, Friday Night Lights and everything West Branch Brown football. And for me to you, I thank you and I appreciate you for that. I know Mark Sharp is really, you know, spearheaded this platform as he shared. And I thank him as well. But you have really been the driving tool, the driving force to allowing us to get our story out, um, not necessarily in real time and not necessarily in, in too much depth, but you're allowing us to get it out to where our community can continue to grow with us. Right. Well, hey, I certainly appreciate it. And yes, on sir. the Kirk and Bird show, I know that they did bring up, you know, where they could find my uh, podcast, but I also wanted to share that, hey, the I only heard. weekly high school football uh, coaches show there was something brewing. Absolutely. I heard it. I heard it. I love it. Hey, hey it's something brewing. <laughs> right. Yes. And uh, so, hey, uh, Coach Cook, uh, yes. appreciate your time. And uh, yes. so fans, uh, continue to go to GoFan.com. Uh, type in uh, Manchester High School. If you haven't been to that website, uh, it's pretty easy. You know, there is a $1 convenience fee, but $11.00. You know, you can't uh, five dollars for students. You know, you can't you can't beat it. Um, and just uh, uh, if you can't make it, if you go to my Facebook page, I, I, I don't know. I'm not very uh, technology savvy, but I kind of created uh, an event where uh, Facebook yeah. Live's going to going to start tomorrow so people can tune in, tune in there. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Hey, we need all the Bruin Nation. If y'all could travel, travel. It's a great weekend. Um, most tra The busiest traveling day will be Sunday. So thankfully, we're playing Saturday. But if you're near or far, you're in that area, we want to pack that stadium. You know, we want to have more Bruins in that stadium than they do Lancers. Right. Yes. And uh, let's see, uh, Coach Cook, I know with uh, stopping by practice uh, earlier in the week, and then, and then yesterday, I mean, I, you know, um, the kids, the staff, I think, uh, I think everybody, everybody now is, uh, ready to, uh, tee it up. And when, uh, when two o'clock, uh, comes tomorrow, I think they're, they're ready to play broom football. Absolutely. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out to Miss Higgins. Uh, she was able to assist in feeding our boys yesterday. Uh, we called it a Thanksgiving appreciation brunch. You know, a, just a simple gesture from my coaching staff to our players for making that dedication and commitment. Although we know, you know, that particular day should be spent with family, relatives, and close uh, friends. Um, you know, they gave us that that time frame to to be able to get with us. And then the other disclaimer: getting there at eight thirty, eight o'clock. Uh, for for morning practice, they had an empty stomach, so we wanted to give them something to hold them over till one, two, or three o'clock. Whenever the family tradition would be the family tradition, but I I just want to say thank you to Miss Higgins, uh, Coach uh, Ted Townsley also had a one of his his people from his his camp also helped serve. Um, so we we're very pleased and thankful. We had also a parent uh, deep fried turkey for us, so. You know, we're, we're, de we're definitely pleased and thankful, you know, for the support, Miss um, Bartow, you name it. But Miss Higgins um, and I believe her daughter, they did a phenomenal job yesterday along with Coach Ted's, uh, you know, support staff. So I just want to say thank you to those guys on behalf of all of our football program. Um, but I'm excited. Bruin Nation, uh, continue to eat good, continue to rest. Uh, we're going to keep you guys in prayer. We understand a, a, a lot of people that are going through you know, certain things during this time, um, although this should be one of the happiest times of, of, of the year. But we also know there are people also going through different seasons. So we're, we're going to surround you guys, our community, our Bruin Nation in prayer. And, um, you know, we love you guys. We thank you for your patience. Yes, and uh, Coach Arculin yes. um, sent me a text over the weekend. And with where he lives, I mean, Manchester's kind of halfway between yep. here and uh, Western Branch. So 
he he was saying that he was he was going to try he was going to try to make it. I mean, and uh, been keeping Mr. Brander and uh, Miss Klein. Um, yes. You know they don't live locally anymore. Keeping them updated, but uh, Coach Cook, uh, thanks again for your time. Any uh, final tidbits of uh, Go Bruins? No, that's it. Uh, you know, I got to get in, uh, earn my keep a little bit, but uh, got to get in there with the guys, make sure things are running right. I got a great staff, so I'm not worried. I uh, got a great group of kids, but I just want to say thank you guys. Thank everybody, you know, for your, your support and your patience, uh, understanding that, you know, yes, we're having success, but it's a lot more work than what it looks like. Um, but, you know, continue to be patient, continue to be supportive. And if y'all could get out there to cheer these kids on a victory tomorrow, get there. Uh, it's never about Coach Cook or our coaching staff. It's all about the other 55 kids on this varsity roster. So we thank you, Bruin Nation. We thank you, Rags. Go Bruins. All right. Well, hey, thanks again, Coach Cook. And, and yes, with uh, using what um, Elizabeth and I have to cover the games, I mean, any way to uh, promote the team of people that can't can't get there and you're right at the end of the day it is all all about the kids but uh all right everybody well hey that's uh that's a wrap and uh you know go go bruins and i'll uh i'll see you guys at the in the 804 there uh tomorrow early afternoon late morning there you go all right well hey bruin nation so that's uh that's a wrap here and uh 2 p.m is uh 6A championship game at at Manchester High School in Chesterfield County. So, all right, well, that's a wrap.